do the final match to wrap up the first week of Season 10. Let's jump into play here. Composition-wise, I... I don't know, man. It's quite even here. But I do question Pandragana. Yesterday, based on his performance, Game 1, he was questionable, making a lot of dives that were unnecessary, but he repaired his mistakes, repaired his gameplay in Game 2. So, again, now against Aura Fire, he needs to be careful. Oh, but there's an interesting fact here. In this game, I think this is the first game where we're not going to see an... Demon Slayer emblem at all. None of the junglers opted to go for the Demon Slayer. High has opted to go for another, but in the mid lane, ooh, yeah. Taz. Taz gets taken really low, and on the bottom side, so does Fluffy. So already a lot of emphasis on the side lanes of Aura Fire, and this is something that we could have highlighted a little bit better for the side of Aura Fire. I think one of the main reasons what made Aura Fire so strong last season was the fact that they have really strong side lanes. And typically, these are the side lanes that are going to be carrying the game in that mid moment. But you can see here Goriva already being a nuisance on to Fursic, trying to prevent him from farming as fast as high. Well, it seems like here in this game, mid number one, yeah, it worked. Ling has already recalled, so already Evos, they are late in rotations. Now, Aura Fire, can they exploit this fact? Because Turtle will be up here, and it seems like uh, Evos Legends, they might to think something here. They might have to do something to counter react. Well, the setup has been put on from the side of Aura Fire to set up for this turtle, but Evo's legends have the pressure as well to contest it. It's turn on, it's time for a fight. It might be time for a fight here as it is going to be Pendragon receiving all the amounts of Ooh. damage and Pendragon barely makes it out of life. First blood is going to be popped, but so does the altar here. And Godiva is going to be doing a lot for his team. The Temps of Blades has been popped as well, but it is going to be the Turtle taken in by High this time around. Or a Fire leading with a 1,000 gold lead and a Turtle into their name. First objective and first kill. This is an Aura Fire that we all know. That early game dominance already placed onto Evo's Legends with, again, Fluffy rotating faster than Pendragon in this game. I mean, well time uh, uh, plays as well. Right? Well time execution as well. I mean, Facehugger got his four on the perfect timing. Pops the old cult, cult, cult altar, and the yeah, Aura Fire can't engage more Evos. They were flabbergasted at that point. Yeah, they really were. I like that with the choice of words here, but look at Godiva. Again, such an absolute menace. You have a Bakja that can kind of withstand that damage, but look at this, Godiva. Gonna get taken down. So Godiva likes to do this. He likes to go for those really aggressive plays, and now it's starting to come back to them as a double-edged sword. Evo's Legends are gonna utilize this fact to be able to put a little bit more pressure on the map and buy Ling a little bit more time to catch up, but Pendragon Ooh. is receiving so much damage from high. How is this possible? This is good for Aura Fire because they don't necessarily need to kill Pendragon to get the pressure on him. But Fluffy, I think he might have overstepped there, losing out on a very crucial battle spell. He won't have that for the next turtle fight, and that might cost him his life. Might cost him their life there. So, I have to see here another setup here in 30 seconds. The turtle is up, but it seems like Aura Fire with this lead. It's evident that it, they can translate the pressure into the side of EVOS Legends. I mean, their main job now is to shut Clover down, which is what EVOS Legend is anticipating already, rotation top side. Yeah, a lot of emphasis onto Kabuki here. He's able to maneuver around that. The Torn Apart memory does pop off, but not enough damage just yet to Ooh. build anything up elsewhere. But now Godiva is going to get a little bit punished, but the Cult Altar comes into clutch here, really oh saving his life as Godiva once again able to deal a lot of amount of damage, but my god, Clover, he's able to do so much. First it goes in for the kill. The Temps of Blade gets popped off as well, but he barely escapes as it is going to be Godiva taken down for oh. the third second time here in this game and Aura Fire. They're still going to make a move on this objective. The typical Aura Fire aggression ends up with actually Evo's Legends getting the dub here. But look at this again. Evo's, they're not backing down. If you want to keep fighting, we will do it as well. Evo's Legends actually matching up that early aggression really well here. 
putting Aura Fire in a tough position. They are putting Aura Fire in a tough position, so it seems like EVOS Legends slowly and steadily here, they are trying to claim more control in the map. They were trying to initiate top side, which, yeah, Aura Fire with the counter setup, they already, but another turtle fight might be here, are brewing here at Tierna. Yes, rotations here coming in from Bajan onto Godiva very aggressively, and I'm not really sure if that's going to be the perfect target for them just yet, okay. as high is on standby with that retribution. The Cult Altar gets popped up, and so does that Tempest of Blades to take Versic once again with that retribution to, to be able to get that turtle as well. So Evo's Legends now one-to-one -one in terms of that neutral objective. The targeting from Aura Fire isn't on point. Every single time, notice how High has always used his ultimate on Pendragon, on Bajin, and that's because Evo's Legends have always positioned themselves in a proper manner. Link comes in in the end when he knows he needs to go for the turtle, but if not, they don't risk their position. They wait in the back, and now it's time to take a look at the items. I mean, item-wise here, Carrie is sitting at a comfortable, comfortable gold here. It seems like the HS already secures here, so providing enough damage for a fight, but to add more depth, he needs that golden staff. Let's take a look at Eamon there, already with the genius one, so expect a lot of damage, even though, especially from the side of EVOS Legends, there are no Athenas built just yet. It does seem like Uriva is going to be rotating and putting a lot of emphasis here in that top side, preventing Kabuki from being taken down or even ganked on. So now with the Killing Spree Emblem that we also see Kabuki on, it does seem they are going to rely heavily on to Kabuki here in the mid to the late stages of the game. Well, in the mid stages of the game, it's going to be actually... I don't know, because both of the teams have proper... Yeah, I think both of the teams have an equal draft here when it comes to that mid game. Both teams getting that power spike basically around the same time. And with the Valentina called Alter Steel, he can provide the same amount of pressure, just like they're doing here. Yeah, Goriva is going to be the target of all and all, but the Cult Alter once again gets popped off and buys him a little bit more time. Is it going to be enough, though? As first thing, it's going aggressively into the backside. Goriva gets taken down by first thing, as well as that Tempest of Blades to get him out of that sticky situation. Pan Dragon is going to be the next one to fall, though, so it is still a one-for-one -one trade, a roamer for the EXP laner. Oh, perfect timing on that Tempest of Blade as well. The shards was about to hit the hands of Fursic, but with that Tempest of Blade, he was immune. It was one for one here. Again, the rumor for Pendragon, so it's, it's uh, I, I could say it's a weak one. But again, we can see here Fluffy being so aggressive on towards Fursic. This is the right move. This might be the right move here. As you can already see here, High already on standby here to be able to get this neutral objective. Godiva is going to be on standby as well, but this is now going to be an uncontested turtle, the third turtle of the game into the hands of Aura Fire, now leading with 1,600 gold. Oh man, Aura Fire, with this gold lead, this is gonna get really good for them. I mean, they can get to those power spikes really, really fast, especially Kabuki here, who's already winning in lane. One level up on Clover. With Kabuki, mid-game is going to be much better from Aura Fire. The thing is, it was even up until that turtle. Now with Kabuki getting that slight lead, they can actually start to put pressure in the jungle. That is exactly what's happening here on screen. You can see Bajan going heavily against Bodiva, trying to do a counter play here, but he's receiving a little bit too much of damage. Pendragon doing his best. They're buying time in that mid side as Facehugger gets taken down so low, but luckily he does still have the time to escape that situation. Luckily, Sprint was there for the, it was inside him. And yeah, take a look at the boots already with Yogi. Ooh. Taz, Ooh. is he going to get taken down? The answer is going to be yes. Clover already dealing an immense amount of damage onto the members of Aura Fire now as they are forced to retreat. This is going to inhibit Aura Fire from being too aggressive. Now. That was super fast, though. Did you see how Taz reacted to that? He clicked on his cult altar almost instantly as he saw High pop out of his stealth. And those little, little crazy wins is going to be so, so important as Kabuki just deals so much damage with that Torn Park memory and they're pushing the pace here, trying to seize out the base. Bajan is going to be the focus and he is going to be the one taken down Aura Fire with yet another kill. Clover now caught in a bad situation here. Kai, unfortunately, is not yet able to take him down. A little stalemate here between... Oh my oh. god, but what? Kabuki with the Torn Apart memory going to seal the deal onto Clover in that top side, giving once again Aura Fire a better lead 
here in the 10th minute. What an incredible display of crisp, clean decision making by Kabuki. Even though Evo had everyone up, he knows that no one was there to defend the Clover. I was miscalculating that. It could have been a blunder, but there was no Evo's members to capitalize. And now it's time for them to look for another fight. Cult Alter is going to be popped here from the side of Evo's Legend. The Skaz is going to be the focus and killing spree instantly is able to be taken by the side of Kabuki. Once again, that torn apart memory comes into clutch as two members now taken down or a fire. They're not stopping. Gani, what happened? It felt like after that one team fight, Aura just took complete control of the game. Itemization, man. Hi. Already collected his Divine Glaive and Calamity Reaper. So the basic attack and as well as the penetration comes in. Percentile projection is there. And of course, Kabuki with that BOD, I mean, he's... It's so evident, right? The damage is just so, so much. So, so much damage right now. As you can see, that the Lord is already marching in the top side. Or a fire gonna focus and take away that turret in that mid side. As High seems to be looking for a play on Kataz. He is going to be taken Ooh. down, but look at this. Fluffy goes in for that falling star on onto two members. There is no follow up just yet, as they don't want to gamble this one out. The minions are still marching down there in that mid side, but over a fire, they're just focusing on that bottom lane. Yeah, they know what to take here. They're being disciplined about it. They don't want to force any crazy team fights. They know that the game is on their hands with a 6,000 gold lead. All they need to do is uh, keep on going for those crazy, crazy sieges. Maybe zone the enemies away. Uh oh, this might be a mistake here. Vent Dragon once again gets first down into the hands of Kabuki. Kabuki once again showing that he is the highlighted key player of Aura Fire with such an aggressive stance on that Brody. Man, this is a um, one-sided game. It's building up. It's shaping up to be a one-sided game. 7,000 gold here for the side of Aura Fire and only the wasters are left for EVOS Legends. Are a fire. They are getting all of those structures here. And oh, Facehugger adding another important item. It's the glowing one. Ooh. Adding DPS. Adding DPS. Adding Dot Dots. as well to his composition of items right now. As we are going to take a look at the player head to head as well for and by the head of shoulders between Clover as well as Kabuki. And it does seem like when it comes to GPM as well as KDA, Kabuki wins those rankings. Yeah. yeah. Well, for the side of um, objective-wise, I mean, average turret damage is heavily. It is heavily leaning towards uh, Clover. But in this game, it's the other way around. I mean, Kabuki winning in all four departments in the, based on this game. And as of right now, our fire... They are playing the um, slow move here, seems like. They do not want to commit, overcommit on towards anything just yet. They are seeking for information. And Pandragon, who has been taken down four times this game, needs to be careful, man. Yeah, they need to be very, very careful. Uh, I think Aura watched yesterday's game where Bigatron Alpha had this kind of lead, but look at this. Hi, getting caught. Uh-oh, but the cult altar does get popped up. It does buy them a little bit more time as well as Fluffy is going in oh for the gags. That falling God. star who connects on to three members. It is going to be Evo's Legends trying to disengage from the aggression coming in from Aura Fire. But once again, very smart maneuver by Aura Fire and really good defensive by Evo's Legends as well. It was amazing. They got four ultimate for only two of theirs and their oh my god the damage from high just way too much able to almost burst ling down and now it comes down to how evo's legends maneuver around it seems like now evo's legends they are still hovering around the area here but be careful be Fight careful my crew. is going to be something that they really need to take into consideration now. The calm before the storm as Aura Fire as well as Evo's Legends are looking for a setup. But on the corner, the Temple Blades have been popped off. But even without that, they were able to get one member from the side of Aura Fire down. This gives them a man advantage. Are they going to go for that Lord? Evo's Legends, this is exactly what they were able to accomplish yesterday against BTR. Waiting for that one moment, that one blunder from the enemy team, and look who they're targeting now. No, Fly! 
Luffy is going to be the victim of it, but he does still manage to escape for now. But Evo's Legends already setting up to be able to take away this Lord Bajan. to their hands. But look at this. Bajan might be in trouble for now, but he is very sustainable. But the damage Ooh. goes in. Look oh. how much damage High is doing as the Falling Star Mode lands onto Pendragon. He is still able to maneuver around that. And once again, a disengage coming in from both teams. 7.7k gold lead though, Ghani, with this. What does Evos need to do to actually take control of the Lord Pit? I mean, it's quite interesting, right? They were a man out, but they could not commit to the Lord. And now, are on fire. They were the ones who initiated and get the Lord. So with this momentum build here, Evos Legends, they have a, a low-key high ground, a good high ground here. With Valentina, with as well as Uranus, can provide fast clear, medium clear, but... Uh, our fire with this Lord push, they might look for two base turrets. With take a look at the economy, right? Ten thousand gold difference. They are man. They manage to give the farm towards a Kabuki, who is now on his way towards Immortal. So the second life could come in clutch. Immortal has been secured here by Kabuki. So again, expect all aggressive plays from this guy. And another, uh, another thing to add is, Amen. Kai, he collected the feather of heaven. A feather of heaven. So again, sustainability, sustainability, sustainability. Glass cannon for high right now as that's gonna be the Lord coming down to that top side. And Aura will try to utilize Kabuki's damage and his basic attack on Brody to siege down Mo Turbots on the base. They need to look for an end very, very soon though, because if not, Evo's legends can just stay in the mid, stay in the base until Culver is able to deal that much damage. Yeah, we can see here that already the cult altar has been popped because the damage has been placed as the torn apart memory gets popped off as well. There is not much damage happening onto the side of Evo's Legends as before that even started, Aura Fire was actually able to bait out that Thames of Blades coming in from Versic with the damage coming in from High with his ultimate. Oh, Bajan, whoa, whoa, whoa! This might be a mistake. He gets popped out with so much damage, but look at this. It's actually going to be Taz taking away Godiva firsthand. Cult Altar is going to be placed once again to buy them a bit more time, but with one man down, even Evo's Legends, they don't want to commit onto this. And I really like how Valentina is playing, how Taz is playing on this, on this Valentina. Always just trying to steal away the Cult Altar. Never trying to be too creative with it, as we've seen Valentina's in the past do. Damage dealt presented to you by Axe, though, shows that High is dealing so much damage, but followed there by Face Hugger and Kabuki with a very slight margin. Yeah, I mean, three members from the side of Aura here is on top. So, again, Aura Fire with their somehow... Uh, items, of course, they can give maximum uh, damage output here towards the side of Evos Legends. That is what Evos Legends need to be aware of. They need to build a defensively, but take a look at Fluffy here, taking chunk, a chunk of HP to from Clover here. But Evos Legends, they can breathe a sigh of relief for now, even though they are down 10k, but it seems like they are now, they are not really defending their base. They're they can on. still explore, they can still look for pickoffs here. So are a fire. They need to be more proactive here, especially in the next two minutes when the Lord, uh, 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 the Lord, when the Lord is up. Yep, the Lord is up right now, and Aura Fire are still grasping onto that gold lead. With the gold lead and with the obviously base or well, the turret lead that they have, mm -hmm. they can actually just have this complete push all around every single time, even without them micromanaging the waves. And because of that, Aura can just invade in the jungle. Versix Bow Buff is going to be taken here. Yeah, it does seem like that is going to be the case, but look at this. It can be Fluffy here taking an immense amount of damage. The Cult Altar has been placed as well, but look at Versic. He goes in High. straight into the middle of everything with the Tempest of Blades, but High still has another chance. Actually, he doesn't, as High, the one of the most important members from the side of Aura Fire to be able to contest this next neutral objective is going to be taken down. Will they go for it as the minion waves in that bottom side is pushing? This is where the wave pressure is going to be insane. It's going to be big for Aura Fire because with the waves, they can actually buy more time for High to come back. And in the 19th minute mark, the death timers aren't that punishing yet. It's still High now on a 20 second death timer. They can buy time for this, but they need to play it right. Evo's Legends on the Lord, but Aura, they need to force them back. We can feel the energy coming in from the audience right now, but look at this. 
Berserk is going to be in trouble here. The Thames of Blade is going to be forced to pop oh, up. Kabuki. There is the Cult Ultra right now. Kabuki, but look Kabuki. at Kabuki. Kabuki is going to try the end the game. Oh, the, the tower Lord. is going to be the target. Oh. And without the Lord, no problem. Aura Fire is going to take game number one against Evo's Legend. Exactly how I said it. The minion wave will be massive in that moment where Evo's